This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, so DJI Mini 4 Pro, we knew that this was in the works. It's been about a year and a half since the Mini 3 Pro release, so that was back in May of 2022, and it's weird because that drone feels like it just came out yesterday. It still feels like it has the makings to be a great mini drone, but DJI said, hey, we can do better and still pack it into a drone that is under 250 grams, and that's right here, the Mini 4 Pro. Now, this is my first unboxing, first flight, first impressions video. I am getting a chance to get my hands on this drone a little bit early, so I've already made my full review video by the time you're watching this video right here. I'll leave that link up at the top corner and I'll put it down in the description if you want to learn all the nuances about this drone. But for today, we'll be unboxing it and taking our very first flight. Even though it's a very similar drone and airframe to what we're used to, there still is some differences inside of here, which is prevalent right here on the box, right? We've got the new RC2, which means we're going to be running 04 in this drone. We've also got omnidirectional obstacle avoidance with a new little sensor right there kind of on the backside. And we also have the upgraded obstacle avoidance hardware here. So we have the new cameras with the wider field of view and the higher resolution. Now, this is the fly more combo, so we do have some extra accessories inside of the box here. But before we tear that open, I do just want to point out that I've got the wide angle lens as well as the ND filter set here. The one thing that's interesting is that this ND filter set is 16, 64, and 256. So we have some serious gaps in between the filters that we have here. And honestly, I'm okay with that. Like having ND4, ND8, ND16, and ND32 are just too tight together. I can adjust my ISO and my shutter speed if I need to on the fly to adjust my exposure for different lighting conditions. But the fact that we now have the 16, 64, and 256 means that I can use the 256 for hyperlapses and the 64 for when it's really bright outside and the 16 for everyday flying. So it's good that we have that big range in our ND filters. Okay, so let's jump on inside of the box here. If I had to guess, in typical DJI fashion, we've got a case. We've got extra batteries, we've got a charging hub, we've got the drone, and we also have the remote controller. Okay, so I was right. We've got the case here. This case doesn't seem much different than previous cases that have come with the Fly More Combo, especially when it comes to the uh, mini drones. Let's see, we'll go ahead and unzip that. It's nice that they use the case to kind of like pack everything together. Opening it up here, we've got the drone, we've got the remote, we've got the battery hub, we probably have some accessories up here in the top. So how about first thing first, we go ahead and we take out the drone, because that is the most important thing here. Now it comes inside of this little sleeve, which will peel open, which then reveals the drone. Look at that, finally, we've got the little propeller guard on here. The Mini 3 Pro didn't come with a propeller guard. The Mini 2 had that kind of rubberized prop guard, but now this holds our props together. That was the most annoying thing about the Mini 3, especially with like the blades that are individual and screwed on. They'd always get all over the place. So we now have that prop guard. That is huge and probably looks like it's very easy to put on. But regardless, prop guard there. We've got those new obstacle avoidance sensors on the backside. This front um, gimbal guard here kind of resembles the new Air 3 gimbal guard. It covers the entire front side of the drone. There is our camera. And then, of course, we have those two new forward obstacle avoidance sensors. And the bottom obstacle avoidance looks very similar to what we had on the Mini 3 Pro. I'll go ahead and take off the little gimbal cover here. And it looks like we also have a auxiliary LED there on the bottom. So check that out. They also added an LED for landing in low light and for spotting at nighttime. That is awesome. Okay, so definitely some cool improvements there to the actual frame of the drone. Also, it looks like it resembles the Mini 3 and not the Mini 3 Pro. And it has these little feet kind of on the front side. The Mini 3 didn't have these. I'm sorry. The Mini 3 Pro didn't have these feet. It was just kind of the arm and it sat on these two little uh, humps down here on the bottom. But now we have actual feet. So that is a cool little addition. Okay, so we'll put this over to the side. You see what I mean? These props get absolutely everywhere and it's hard to manage. So I'm happy that they have the gimbal guard in there. Now moving on here, we have the RC2 included with this drone here. So this is the upgraded remote. This means that we're going to have the built-in screen, 700 nits of brightness. We've got the four antennas, of course. This bag does not want to come open. So we'll have to tear it a little bit here. I've been using this same remote controller with the Air 3 now for a little bit, and I absolutely love it. It really is uh, nice to have the built-in screen. It's nice to have the pop-up antennas here, the uh, uh, the sticks that come out as well. So this is a good remote. Happy to have the fly more combo for that. Looks like our charging hub is basically the same exact one as the Mini 3 Pro. So for those of you that might be upgrading from the Mini 4, or sorry, from the Mini 3 to the Mini 4 here, it'll be nice that you can use the same batteries, it looks like. So same batteries, same charging hub as well. So you can use all of your old accessories if you wanted to, giving you that much longer of flight time. Let's see, that does it for everything in the main compartment. 
From here, we can unzip and reveal some extra things. We've got our pamphlet. We have some extra cables. We've got some extra propellers as well. We've got the silica gel and a tool, a screwdriver to remove the propellers. And that's pretty much all. That is everything that comes inside of the Flymore combo here for the Mini 4 Pro. We've got the RC2, two extra batteries, charging hub, the drone itself. There's obviously a battery inside of the drone. We've got the gimbal guard. We've got extra propellers. This is everything we need right here to fly. So speaking of that, why don't we head outside and do our very first First flight here with the Mini 4 Pro. All right, so this first flight is going to be a little different from the rest because we are not in a familiar area. Usually, I do my first flight off of the parking garage in Maniunk in Philly. That has been my go-to spot for years now, but I am currently in Orlando, Florida. I just unboxed the Mini 4 Pro last night, jumped on a plane. I'm here now, and I've got some free time, so we'll be doing our first flight with the Mini 4 Pro here I don't know exactly what park we're in, but it's kind of similar to where we fly in Maniunk. We've got a highway, we've got some water, we've got the city skyline. So we'll be flying the Mini 4 Pro here for the very first time. And of course, the weather is so much nicer down here in Florida. Now, before we go to our first flight, a quick word from this video sponsor, Squarespace. Just recently, I completely overhauled my Squarespace site with a brand new template to give it a clean feel. It was difficult to choose a template because of all the great options that Squarespace offers, but I eventually found one that allowed me to share my images and information in the way that I wanted. Redoing my website was seamless as the new Fluid engine made it easy to fully customize every aspect to my liking. I've been looking to find the best place to share my content online and doing it on my own terms with Squarespace allows me to completely customize the experience. My website is like a central hub for all of my photos and videos and I'm the one that gets to control how it looks and functions. To keep on top of how my website is performing, Squarespace's analytics go in depth so that I can see how much traffic my website is getting, what area of my website is being viewed the most, and I can see which web pages and which content is performing the best. What I love most about Squarespace is how easy it is to keep up to date with my website and keep uploading the photos and videos that I capture when I'm on my travels. I'm always on the go, so being able to just upload those images to my template really does make things easy. So a big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and helping me display my work online for over half a decade. Okay, now it's time to get into our first flight with the Mini 4 Pro, and I want to get this over as fast as possible because it is so hot outside. Like, I almost want to use the drone as a nice fan. Now we do have an altitude zone here. We're gonna unlock that and we'll go ahead and buzz off. Now, as I mentioned, we do have a somewhat familiar area as uh, we usually fly in with the highway, with the water, with the buildings and the city. So it is a little bit similar, but also is very different at the same time because I wouldn't be sweating like this if I was up in Philadelphia. Now, the Mini 4 Pro here has a couple of different things that I wanna test out and try out. First, why don't we just buzz around the lake here? So this drone does have OcuSync 404, which is DJI's newest transmission system. We are using the RC2 here. So the drone has a total of six antennas on it, and this has a total of four antennas on it, the remote controller which means that your signal strength is just going to be, I mean, downright incredible. Like, even right now, flying around this lake, you know, getting about a 1,000 feet, we're not going to do anything absolutely absurd here, but I expect there to be absolutely no breakup in the signal. Even OcuSync 3 or O3 would have been able to easily handle this. This drone's got some speed to it, too. We are in sport mode. I don't think, let's see, did I dial this in? I don't know if I've dialed in my controls. Again, like I... Literally just took this thing out of the box. We'll have to check it out. Now, we are ripping around in the sport mode. OcuSync 4 uh, was first introduced on the Air 3. And if you guys remember, I did a good old range test where I had a visual observer tracking the car or tracking the drone in a car. So it was like a chase car. And uh, <laughs> I got about 57,000 feet on one flight or just under 11 miles, which is insane. Now, let's do a nice reveal of the city here. My one issue with the mini series has always been the dynamic range of the camera. Now, we're not on the best angle of the city here. Like, I would say if we wanted to get the best light on the city, we'd have to go kind of to, like, the south side. But unfortunately, there's just a ton of airports and restricted airspace down there, so we've got to deal with this side up here. Now, I also have the camera just on automatic camera settings, um, mainly because I don't feel like having to deal with switching the exposure while I'm sitting here talking as I'm flying the drone. Now, I can tell you right now, the dynamic range looks pretty good from my view on the screen. It's kind of tough to see with the bright sunlight. It's going to be interesting to see what it looks like once we finally land the drone and get it on the computer. But you guys are seeing it, and it's nice full 4K resolution, so I'd love to hear what you've got to say. I am already sweating, which is crazy. Now, we do have the uh, automated, or not the automated, but the augmented reality tools in here. So that's our uh, augmented reality home point down there. So no matter which way we spin, we're going to be able to see where our home point is. So you can see now it's in the bottom left corner. And check this out. If we return to home... 
which we'll go ahead and press down the button, it'll actually give us a beam or like a uh, directional, I guess, guide in terms of which way the drone is flying. And you'll notice that as it comes towards me and as it begins to lower its altitude and land, it actually pitches the camera down with the, with the, um, movement of the drone and it'll also show you where the drone is going to land using a little augmented reality uh, tool as well. So this is really cool. I really enjoy this. This was introduced on the Mavic 3 and it's made its way down here to the Mini 4 which is nice. I like to see that. The one thing I'd love to see is vision assist be added which that brings us to another change of this drone. We've got omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. So why don't we try and buzz around some of these trees here. Let's try to crash the drone. We'll try to crash the Mini 4. So let's come around this way. And we'll fly through these trees here. So we have omnidirectional obstacle avoidance. I mean, I'm going to hit this gap no matter what. Maybe we'll try the bypass mode. So right now you'll see the drone sees some of the obstacles around its side. I'm, I'm totally flying the drone right now, by the way. So it's not being flown by itself using the bypass mode. But it is flying very slow. It's showing upwards obstacles. It's showing obstacles to the side. Like, see if we come through here. It's going to come to a complete stop. So omnidirectional obstacle avoidance is really great on a mini drone just because I feel like a lot of beginners will be purchasing this and giving them that cushion around the drone really is nice. It also gives us new updated active track modes, which are awesome. And I'll have a full active track video coming out soon. Don't you worry about that. Now, this drone also moves a little bit faster in the normal mode. So right now we are able to climb at 11 miles an hour. So we're able to go up. I mean, that's pretty damn fast for a mini drone. And then if we wanted to dive down to the ground, we also get... All right, now we're doing negative one miles an hour. I want to dive down to the ground. So we can go down at 11 miles an hour, which is very impressive. I love how DJI is making these drones, like, faster. So in the normal mode, we can now fly faster than we could with the Mini 3 Pro just because we have the upgraded obstacle avoidance. I'm going to try and cross over to the next lake. I just want to make sure that the road is safe here it doesn't look like we have anybody passing under so we'll go ahead flip into sport mode and zoom right over nice all right so this lake over here is completely different i think again we're kind of flying in foreign territory right now i'll tell you what i'm super impressed with the performance of the mini 4 pro it's really not all that much different from the mini 3 pro but i mean it's cutting through all the wind that we have here it is somewhat of a windy day it's cutting through all the wind very easily I'm able to dive down to the ground super fast. I mean, right now I'm diving down at negative 11 miles an hour. We are getting a battery overcurrent <laughs> warning. That happens to be pretty often with the Mini 3 Pro and I'm really pushing it. So that's nothing new. Let's spin around. It looks like we have a cluster of buildings over here, which are kind of cool. And with this drone, we do have a little bit of digital zoom. So why don't we try that out? We'll go ahead and zoom in. Now again, this is completely digital, so we get 3x digital zoom when we're using or shooting in 4K. So it's using that quad bear sensor to digitally punch in on the image. I mean, we've got a 48 megapixel image here, and really, uh, when you're shooting 4K, that's only 12 megapixels. So you've got some room here to digitally punch in. This doesn't seem as sharp to me as I would like it to be. Like, I don't think I would use this on the regular. I'd probably much rather just shoot using the full focal length of the camera and get closer to what I need to. I actually captured a pretty badass hyperlapse here with the Mini 3 Pro the last time I was in Orlando. Um, I actually flew from a nearby parking garage and then hit the city skyline from this side, which was pretty cool. Let's come on over. We'll cross the road again. We'll make sure that there's no cars. Does the chick... What is it? Does the chicken cross the road? We're clear after these cars here. All right, we'll zip across. Yeah, so, like, the the issue with, like, even, like, the Mavic Mini and the Mini 2 was always uh, an issue of performance for me just because I always want something that's super fast and super agile. And even now that we can fly in the normal mode at, you know, a faster top speed and a faster uh, descent and ascent rate is really nice. Let's do a reveal up and over these trees of the buildings behind us. This isn't the main section of the city, but I just figured we've got some good light here. So why don't we give it a try? We'll come, we'll swoop down, and then we'll go ahead and change our movement to go up we'll fly up and over the trees i definitely did jump in and change these settings i guess i did it after the unboxing because it does feel nice and smooth sweet yeah these mini drones have just gotten so good i remember the very first time i flew the mavic mini i was like floored at how good that little drone was i didn't expect it to be anything spectacular but it was so much more than just a toy cool awesome now let me quickly stop recording 
I'm gonna flip the camera because this camera does now shoot video in vertical format. We of course had this in the Mini 3 Pro, but this has been brought over to the Mini 4 Pro as well. So if I wanted to spin around and get a shot of the skyline here, the main skyline of Orlando with the highway here, I think this is I-4, this is perfect for Instagram, TikTok, social media, wherever you want to go and upload your videos to. Now this camera can shoot 4K up to 100 frames per second. We're just shooting in 30 frames per second right now because I don't need anything crazy. Also, I hope that my camera doesn't overheat because it's crazy hot out right now. What's nice is I'm kind of in like a residential area, but nobody's going to be bothering me because I'm flying the Mini. Like if I had the Inspire 3 out here, or even maybe the Mavic 3, I'd be making a pretty loud noise when I'm buzzing around in sport mode, but just now, the drone flew over my head at 300 feet in sport mode, cruising at its top speed, and I really couldn't even hear it. The only reason I really heard it was because I knew that it was coming. So yeah, vertical video shooting is great. We can also take vertical photos as well. That's something I always like to do was capture portrait photos with my Mini 3 Pro, and now it's going to be nice to be able to also do it with the Mini 4 Pro. Let me go ahead and stop recording. I'm going to flip back over, and I'm going to begin recording again. There we go. I'm gonna bring the drone back. I mean, we've burned a good amount of the battery here. We've gotten a good feel for the drone. Again, there's nothing crazy new, but I would say the biggest changes made here are 04, so now we get great range. I mean, in this time, buzzing around this area, which is really a good serviceable amount of room, we didn't have one breakup or one signal loss issue whatsoever. I don't even think the bars dropped whatsoever. We were about a half a mile away. Um, also, the obstacle avoidance sensors are new as well. So there it conducts our first flight with the Mini 4 Pro. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Feel free to let me know your thoughts down below. Again, remember, I already made my full review video of this drone. I'll leave that linked up in the top corner and down in the description. If you've got a Mini 3 Pro, do you think you'll upgrade to this drone? Let me know. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.